Hello again, and welcome back to a very cold Sunday, I don't know what it is, about 11 o'clock, oh, Scott Wonders World, and the companion piece to the video that I did last week, which was the worst beers, my opinion, that the good shop, the good shop, starting it <laughs> good ship brew dog have ha we've reviewed on scott wonders world slash beer wonder slash wonder beer wonder so we've been going for almost four years ridiculously i didn't think we go for four minutes four weeks four days whatever um so thank you for people that have come along for the ride it's much appreciated and that's easy to say but it really is um very much appreciate anybody that watches Thumbs up, thumbs down, all that rubbish. Um, didn't realise when I was putting the uh, the the worst beers, uh, Brewdog beers, in my opinion, that we've reviewed on this channel that we've done almost forty. Uh, so the idea was to do the worst and the best. Um, so we've had a a slate of what I think is the absolute dross from Brewdog. Things like pale, their pale ale. Um, what else is on the list? Uh, the, the note somewhere. Just us to rubber. Candy Kittens, uh, Way Out West, um, Silk Road, all utter shite. The Punk at 15, just just dre dreadful, <laughs> absolutely dreadful. But whatever you think of Brewdog, um, they have a huge place in... British, and let's be honest now, they're not craft beer anymore. They're um, very much mainstream, almost macro uh, size, a big beer these days on the production. You go into any supermarkets, the shelf space they, um, they, they take up is enormous in the, in, the, in the supermarkets now. Probably the biggest, well, probably not even, probably the biggest um, provider of craft beer into supermarkets now by a month um, and I think probably their beers have suffered for that. Um, I'm going to take a look today at the 10 beers that we've reviewed on the channel that I think are the best that I've and Wanda have reviewed um, and it's actually been quite difficult. It is probably more difficult than the the worst beers, because the worst beers just stand out in your head. Uh, the, the the best beers are quite hard to pick from. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been interesting. Um, I've had to rewrite it a couple of times. Actually, rewrote it this morning because uh, I was having a conversation with my very good friend, who I'm not ashamed to mention on most of my videos, uh, Dean, uh, who uh, reminded me of a beer. Uh, that really needed to be on this list, and it was actually on a list that I'd wrote to begin with. And for some reason it got lost. I don't know where it got lost in, in, in the shuffle. Um, so it's back on the list and it's got a very deserved place. So the 10 best beers we reviewed on Scott Wonders World slash Beer Wonder slash Wonder Beer Wonder. As you would have seen with all of the other um, top 10 videos I've done, I give honourable mentions. Uh, so something that could have made the top 10 but didn't quite. Um, on this one, there are none. <laughs> there are no honourable mentions of beers that could have made the top 10 list. Uh, because apart from the beers that are on this list, or the one that made it, or the, um, the list for the top 10 worst beers, the rest of the Brewdog beers on this channel have either been largely for, uh, forgettable, they've been bang average, or they've been dog piss. So, there are no honourable mentions in the top 10 Brewdog beers we've reviewed on Scott Wonder's World. Be wonder. Wonder, be wonder. So, we're going to start at number 10. Now, we'll start at number 1. We want to count down. Build a bit of drama. Number 10. And it's Hazy Jane. Now, I want to be very clear that this isn't the abortion of a beer that is currently in supermarkets, masquerading at about 5%. Uh, when I say Hazy Jane, 
I don't mean that monstrosity. I'm on about the original Hazy Jane, about 7.2%. Um, not the bastardization that they've got of either OG Hazy, Hazy Jane, Triple Hazy, whatever it is, or any of the other bollocks. The original 7.2% absolute banger of a beer. It was brilliant. Um, actually, took a f um, the first time I tried this on camera, had it before, was on our first ever live stream with, again, my good friend Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews. Go and give Dean a sub if you don't. He's fantastic. And, um, and then on, on got on one as well. It was probably Beer Wonder back then. Or Wonder Beer Wonder, can't remember. Um, we reviewed it on the 3rd of March, 2020. And I did it in comparison because they just re brewed, rebadged, redone Hazy Jane to these three monstrosity beers. And I put it up against the OG Hazy, which what they were saying was the what was was Hazy Jane. It wasn't it was I think I threw it out of the shed out of memory, I can't remember. Um but Hazy Jane, the original seven point two percent, um really decent supermarket um New England IPA. Hoppy, juicy. Um it was had a great mouthfeel, stone fruits, mango, pineapple, uh, pillowy soft, all for your three quid in a 440ml can. Just a really, really solid beer. And they went and fucked it up. So coming in at number 10, it is the proper Hazy Jane. And I hope you can get some disagreement with these because I think there'll be, I think there'll be a surprise at number one. Um, I hope so. I don't want to be, um, and I thought about it. Here we go. Number nine is layer cake. No wonder why you put this one in there. <laughs> so I could not put layer cake in for wonder. Um, these are all beers that obviously on the so-called beer reviewer of this channel um wanders the stout reviewer she tells me layer cake is fantastic i think it's a bit sweet a bit sweet for me uh, we were uh, available in tesco's originally now available absolutely everywhere in every supermarket in the known universe um and we reviewed it on the 4th of october 2020 and it's one of wanders absolute favorites uh absolutely adores layer cake and i think if they ever um stop brewing it or put it into a supermarket i think she'll probably get the arse on um it is too sweet for me um i can see why wonder likes it um the uh, it's not a particularly um the adjuncts are done really well um and it's a it's a quite it's a very nicely made beer it's nice chocolate there's a nice strawberry vibe to it you get the marshmallowy strawberry vibe a uh, bit of vanilla uh, the alcohol is well hidden. It's about I think six point eight percent. I think it's something like that. Um, and I can drink maybe half a can, uh, but for the fact, Wanda likes it as well. Um, that's why it's re it's it's in at, um, number nine uh, because I think it deserves a place. It's been around for a, a few years now. Layer cake. I know it's a, it divides people, but I think it's all right. So number nine, it's a layer cake. Bringing us to number eight, uh, number one, bringing us to number eight. And it's the newest beer on the list, I think, from memory. I've got some notes scattered around, you can't see them. Ooh. Number eight is um, Almost Famous. Which went into Tesco's, oh, it was June last year. Tesco's, Tesco, plural. Uh, went into um, Tesco June last year. Uh, it was included in the June drop of craft beer, uh, which there was that. Um, there was some Buxton stuff. There was some um, Beavertown beers and the odd bits and bats here and there. Um, but this was, for me, the one that actually the can art stood out. I don't think I've got one. Um, stood out the most for me very very um although it was all black and white i liked it um and it it it, it shifted for me uh tesco's approach 
to the craft beer drop, which I'm going to do a video on actually. Um, where out went a load of the 330 mils, and now we've got two lines of 440 mils in, the, in their supermarkets, and that's it. Um, three at most, and then you get boxes of stuff, etc. 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 But almost famous New England IPA. Um, now, I know a lot of people are saying that. Um, Almost Famous was just a rebadge of the Brewdog vs Cloudwater beer. I can't comment on that because I haven't put them up together side by side. But there is a very, very good video out there by Dave the Beer Dad. So Beer Dad, go and give Dave some love. Um, he did a side by side comparison and he says that they are the same beer. I say I, I can't judge that and the two reviews I did... Uh, of these two beers are, are two, three years apart. Um, but go and give Dave's um, video a watch. It is really, really good and it is really in interesting. But even if it is a rebadge, the fact that they've brought that back, it was it is a really good beer. But it was just a, a welcome return of actually having a half decent beer in the, um, the supermarket um, for Brewdog. Because up until that point, for the last 18 months, they've all been pretty crap. Um, we've had to put up with shit with like Candy Kittens and Silk Road, um, Tony's Hopper Only. So to get a really nicely made um, New England IPA into the supermarkets from Brewdog, whether it was a rebadge of the Cloud War, uh, Brewdog vs Cloud War or not, I don't really care. It was just a nice change and a welcome surprise. Nice stone, stone fruit flavours. Um, there were some tropical flavours, there was a nice body, the carbonation was good, it had a nice pillowy mouthfeel, um, it's a decent beer, and at £3 it was, it, was, it was okay, although I haven't had it since I picked it up, so they've probably ruined it now. So coming in at number 8, almost famous, um, New England IPA. Which brings us to number 7, and it was an absolute belter. When it went into Morrison's um, at the time in April 2020, and it's the Vermont Sessions. <music> Brewdog and Northern Monk collaboration. You'd had all of the praise for the Brewdog versus Cloudwater collab, um, the New England IPA, and they followed that up with uh, Future Proof, which was one of my worst beers. Uh, roaster coaster so they dropped and then um, Morrison's got on, on the bandwagon and brought this one out and this was a session New England IPA about five percent or something like that I can't honestly remember what the percentage was uh, branded a session New England IPA right in the middle of the craft beer boom of beer drops between Morrison's and Tesco so they were fighting it out so it came after the, uh, the Brewdog versus Cloudwater uh, another absolute treat of a beer uh, in the supermarket. Another three pounder. Um, a banger. It was soft, lovely carbonation, sherbetty, tropical fruits, stone fruits, all the stuff you'd expect from a decent um, New England IPA session version. A little bit coconutty as well. Um, it, it was, at the time, right up there with the Brewdog Cloud, Cloud Water um, collaboration. And... It was just a fantastically made beer. I know it's still on the shelf. I might pick one up for a re-review. If you're interested in seeing um, a re-review of the Mark Sessions, I haven't had it in, in a, a very, very long time. So I might pick one up. I saw it was um, on the shelf the other day. Uh, but there's no surprise in that it's a really good beer when you've got someone like Northern Monk involved. Because Northern Monk, for me, the absolute standout superstar of uh, supermarket... Um, breweries that are putting beers into supermarkets. This could rank higher. Um, I did think about it. But for me, yeah, Vermont Sessions, uh, New England, uh, Session New England IPA, Brewdog and Northern Monk is a, an absolute belter. So, no, and then that brings us to number six. And number six is the one I've just been talking about as well. It's the Brewdog versus Cloudwater New England IPA. Now, when we talk about, <laughs> so this was available with Tesco's, uh, it came out in the, I think it was the August drop, the summer drop, um, uh, in 2019, so three, four years ago, or three and a half years ago now, 
There's time gone. Um, when you talk about game changing beers, this was a game changer in supermarkets. Uh, along, with the, along with beers like the once magnificent um, Los Cosmonauts, sadly isn't anymore. And there's still great uh, Love and Hate, which is still pretty good to be fair. Uh, Brewdog vs. Cow Water changed the landscape uh, of beers in uh, the supermarket. I think I'm, I think I'm uh, justified in saying that. It was an absolute belter of a beer for three pound. It made people really stand up and take notice of craft beer. And it probably sent people over to um, different breweries. Uh, people picking this up have probably not tried um, craft beer before. And it really was an absolute storm of a beer. This was before the Brewdog's bean counters got involved and their passion for making good beer seemed to have evaporated. Um, and when you had a brewery like Cloudwater involved, you also said they weren't going to put any beers into supermarkets. Um, you're not going to go wrong. The answer was like, um, so if you've got Cloudwater and Brewdog, are you going to get a, bit, a decent beer? The answer is in those days, there was nothing like it. It was brilliant at the price, it was smooth, it was silky, um, it was pillowy soft, um, it, should, it was how a New England IPA should be, and three pound in your supermarket. Um, a beer that probably sparked the supermarket boom, I think, and made other supermarkets take note of what could be produced at that price. Well, there you go. Um, it'll probably have been, uh, People are probably going to say that it could have been higher in my list. For me, there are better beers that I've had, uh, especially when you see my top four. But there's really no doubt in this. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that this play, uh, this beer deserves a place on in supermarket craft beer history. Um, so number six is Brewdog versus Cloudwater's self-titled New England IPA which I reviewed on the 15th of August, 2019. Uh, number five, and we're gonna we might cause a few um, um, conversations now. Number five is Double Punk, Double Punk IPA. Now, you probably think I've gone mad, and I want to I want to, uh, to clear up immediately and we'll clarify. This isn't, I'm not talking about the supermarket version of Double Punk. This one was the one that came out as a four pack of four 330 mil cans, which I don't think I've got anymore, um, that was a website original. Because uh, I don't think I've had the supermarket version. I know people say it's absolute shite. So I'm gonna go on the beer that I took a look at on the channel. We all know the history of Punk IPA and ruined over time and it's now the bastard cousin of a beer it once was masquerading as Punk IPA and it isn't. Uh, back in 2020, the Good Ship Brewdog, we reviewed this on the 19th of June to, uh, 2003. Uh, Back in 2020, yeah, the Good Ship Brewdog, they um, decided to release a double version of Punk coming in at 8.2%. So not a double ABV version of Punk, just a double IPA version of Punk. And it was 8.2%. And it was banging. It was magic. It was a love magic beer. Um, just a really good beer. Sweet, grapefruit, pineapple, um, piney. It was hoppy. It was, it was just, it was raging, and uh, a raging, smashing your mouth beer. Um, wasn't punk of old, um, you know, um, but it, it did its job, and it wasn't the hiding that booze, and it was a fucking raging version, just a raging version of punk IPA, it ramped up. 8.2%, um, wild, what was it, I can't remember how much the box was, and you had the absolute shit that was punk at 15 um and it just shows you what they can do because double punk from the brewery was absolutely fantastic i loved it i think i had all four cans that day <laughs> it, it, i don't i think it was, was it during lockdown i think it was released during lock, lockdown 
don't know, I can't remember. But it was it was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Brilliant beer. And yeah, I say I can't attest to the supermarket version, but I do know that Double Punk IPA from Brewdog's website as a website exclusive was absolutely fantastic and deserves its place at number five. Bringing us down to number four, and number four is the first stout, I believe, on the list. And it was in Morrison's, and it was Jet Black Heart, the Nitro version. <laughs> Reviewed as part of the um, September 2020 drop uh, into Morrison's. Uh, we reviewed it on the 2nd of September 2020. And it's a vanilla oatmeal milk stout with a nitro widget. Uh, one that was in the, the real um, grasp of um, enjoying her and learning about stouts. And uh, we reviewed it. Um, she really wanted to take a look at it. I picked it up. Uh, Jet, Black, Jet Black Heart, not a new beer. Um, it been around for a long time but then they, they they produced this nitro version of it um and it was terrific absolutely terrific um nice coffee aromas there was roasted malt um there was nice vanilla there's a milk chocolate and some dark fruits in there as well creamy with that nitro obviously the nitrogen giving it an absolutely wonderfully creamy um body to it uh, it was like a dessert in a can and an absolutely cracking beer uh, wonder liked it as well which, to be honest, is always a bonus because if Wanda likes it, the chances are it might make the, it might make the top ten. So yeah, I really like, and I like Jack Blackheart. It's a, um, the the nitro version. It's a, and I have to caveat that these are the beers that we've tried on the channel. I've tried obviously other Brewdog beers um, out and about in the Brewdog bars, etc., etc. And on Dean's channel, he was talking about the Zwickle, Zwickle um, prototype hells that we have tried on his live, but it's only on stuff that we tried on on our channel. So number four is a Jet Black Heart, which brings us to number three, and the highest placing uh, stout on my list. Can I say that, or is that giving anything away? I don't think it is. It's Roaster Coaster. <laughs> Where do you start with Roaster Coaster? Um, so number three, Roaster Coaster. Um, Released into Tesco's in March, in the March drop. There's only two beers in that March drop, um, both from Brewdog, 2020. So you had Roaster Coaster with Evil Twin, I've got the can up there actually, and the absolute abortion that was um, Future Proof with Modern Times over in San Diego. Um, those two beer, beers dropped in, couldn't have been more poles apart in quality. Um, the Future Proof was just dreadful. Roaster Coaster. Um, I spoke about it on the uh, the, the launch of this beer on the the worst beer um, video, and it was launched at the same, launched at the same, uh, same time as Future Proof, um, and it was off the back of the success of the collab with Brewdog and Cloud, the Brewdog Cloud What New and the IPA. So Brewdog were releasing these um, collab beers, um, probably thinking that they could put any old shit into the supermarket. Uh, certainly with um, Future Proof, but Roaster Coaster, uh, it it met what it was designed to do. It was obviously it was um, a, a, a collab with Evil Twin, and thankfully this beauty was here to save the day of that drop because it was phenomenal. Uh, it was a, a nitro Vietnamese coffee. Sorry, a nitro imperial Vietnamese coffee stout at a 9% uh, ABV, and it was brilliant. It was absolutely, Dean said it was, I've been speaking to Dean about this this little video, and he said, is it gonna be number one? This Roaster Coast has gotta be number one, or around number one, and it probably was for a little a little while. Um, nitro brilliance, uh, super creamy from that nitro. It does mask a slightly thin beer, that nitro, but um, that nitro gives it that wonderfully creamy body huge coffee aroma it's like a, a shot of espresso coffee uh don't drink it before you go to bed because you'll be up all night um but you've got dark chocolate roasted malts um there's 
a gentle sweetness in there as well. 9% ABV is nowhere to be seen. Uh, you know, sorry, that's not true. You know it's there, but it's not massively intrusive. And easily, easily the best Brewdog stout that's ever gone into a supermarket, in my opinion. I think it's just a phenomenal, a wonderful, wonderful beer. Um, and sadly, no longer available on the, um, the the supermarket shelves. So number three, it's a roaster coaster. Bringing us to number two, and it's the beer I forgot about. So I was having a conversation with Dean on WhatsApp this morning, saying, what are you up to today? I said, I've got, to, um, got this video to record. What's he eating? Um, and he said, um, does this, uh, a, do any overworks uh, beers make the, and I was like, shit, I've missed one. <laughs> shit, I've missed one. And I, I said, I made a couple of, li I made a list, checked it twice, couldn't work out if I was naughty or nice. But yeah, I, I, for some reason, I omitted this beer from my list. And it deservedly has its place as number two. It's from the Overworks um, project of Brewdog. So they're sour, sort of experimental um, project stuff. And it's Funk X Punk. So Funk X Punk. Um, can't, can't believe I forgot it. <laughs> can't believe I forgot to put it on the list. Um, an absolutely f a, a very divisive beer, I would think. I would think some people would get it and some people wouldn't get it. I watched a live stream before if we got the channel i don't think we had uh, it was on dean's channel and he was live with christoph and some other bloke um and they took a look at funk x punk and they said that if a, a if a normal man or a normal drinking man went in there picked up this wonderful big bomber bottle with a size of funk x punk for a fiver took it home they'd be like either fucking hell what's that or what's that because basically what it was, it was, and that this is the oldest video on this list, I think. We reviewed it, or is it? Don't know. Um, 27th of October, 2019, I don't know, the Brewdog versus Cloudwater would have come before that, wouldn't it? Um, 27th of October, 2019, um, available in Tesco's at £5 a bottle. The Overworks project of um, Brewdog, and it was that. So basically, what it was is their flagship punk IPA, and it was aged and fermented in with Brett yeast, uh, so um, funky farmhouse style yeast, giving it that really. Stop eating the plants. Uh, funky. So you got the 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 brew, uh, the punk IPA backbone, with this slightly funky um, farmhouse -y, uh, farmhousey sort of flavour in a row, so a bit sour. Um, and it was fantastic. <laughs> it was really, really good. I used to buy loads of it. Um, very strange that it was put onto a supermarket shelf so early on. Um, but the I think the farmhouse style would have put a lot of people off. Uh, I loved it. Um, and for me, it's one of the best beers they've ever done. And so I can't believe I missed it off the list to begin with. Um, I wish I'd bought more because you could age it. It had about two, three years... Um, uh, best before on the on the bottle so you could have aged it so that 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 um brett yeast would have kept going over time and making it funkier and funkier and funkier um slightly lambic style to it i thought it was wonderful i thought it was absolutely lovely i should have bought more and i can't believe that i actually forgot to put it on this list so dean thank you ever so much for um reminding me number two is funk x punk uh from the overwork section from brewdog which brings us to number one now you're thinking, and this is going to divide a few people. Uh, you're thinking, so you've got Roaster Coaster, you've got um, Vermont Sessions, you've got Layer Cake, you've got Almost Famous, you've got Funk X Punk, you've got Hazy Jane, you've got all these beers, Scott, in your top ten. Nine of them, so far. What's your number one? I don't think this is going to cause a bit of debate if I'm honest my number one beer that I've reviewed from Brewdog 
is the beer I enjoyed drinking the most. Because it was a quality version of a beer that no longer exists. Number one is Better Down the Hatches, Wait for the Hate. It's Punk IPA on the Krups, the Sub. I'll wait for you to stop laughing and start throwing things at the screen and shouting. Um, it's gonna be, this is one that's going to be controversial, and I do know that. Um, my favourite beer, and the best beer I've ever... Um, not, not the best beer. My favourite beer on this channel is Punk IPA the, on the uh, Crups of Sub, so the Torp version of Punk IPA. I think it was 15 quid. For a two and a half, two, is it two and a half litre keg? So it's expensive. Well, it was expensive at the time. Don't haven't bought anything for my crops of sub for a very, very long time. Mainly because the postage are packaged in. You got to buy fucking four hundred and three to get your, your postage free. The postage and uh, the post uh, P and P uh, for um, Beer Wolf is just ridiculous, which has put me off. I've done a whole video on the crops of sub. Um, Everyone knows I've enjoyed my share of Punk IPA over the years. Uh, although not these days. As it's alcoholic dog piss. Uh, and this is the, the, the Torp version. Where it's a direct opposite of the overpriced crap that was a PD version. Um, it, was, so it wasn't cheap. I think it's two pounds. I think it was 15 quid. But it was fantastic. It had a great draft quality version of punk IPA. It was smooth in the mouth. It was there's like a, a creaminess to it. It was fresh. It was crisp. And it just tasted brilliant. Um it was hoppy. Uh I could just go on about it. I could salivate and talk about it. Um it was just brilliant. Um uh, was it as good as punk used to be? No. But I don't think we're ever gonna get to that stage. But I tell you what, it was the next best thing. Uh and as a massive proponent of punk IPA, I'll take that. Sadly, it didn't last long on the sub, or I've probably returned to it regularly. Um, we can also go on about Brewdog. I slate Brewdog if their beers are shit. I'll also praise them if they're good. I've got an equity for Punk Card. You know, I get my 5% off for lifetime. Um, but the the Punk IPA and the Crups of Sub, for me, was my favourite drinking experience of any dog beer that I've done on this channel because it just brought back memories of of when punk could be good um, and so you look at the 41 42 43 pound mess that was the punk on um, the perfect draft and you can see um, uh, what they were capable of so that's my list of 10 my, my top 10 um, favorite Brew dog beers that we've done on Scott Wonder's World. Beer Wonder. Wonder Beer Wonder. We got some curveballs in there. Thank you obviously so much for Dean for helping me out with Funk X Punk. Because if I'd have left that out, I'd be mortified going back at the video. Um, what are your thoughts? What are the best beers that you've had? From, I know Brew Dog, uh, Brew dog are divisive. I understand the the politics and the bullshit around them. Um, but there's there is a market. And like it or like it, lump, lump it. I don't think they're going anywhere. Uh, so yeah, they're my they're my top ten beers. So there's no honourable mentions. The only one that I might have given an honourable mention to was La, La Out Lau, uh, the the Peter Crouch um, Lager Stout, Baltic Porter, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, that's my top ten. Number two and number one, I think, could cause a few um, hair hair raising moments. What are your favourite beers? Um, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you don't, then give it a thumbs down. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Uh, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, if you like the video and you're new here, there's a subscribe button. That always helps the channel, but it's not. doesn't matter either. Um, any other top 10 videos you want to see? Um, what have you thought of the video? Leave all your comments in the comments box. And me and the lovely Wanda, we'll see you very soon. Have a good week.